Marco Polo lived in China for 17 years. When he came back, he reported, the emperor is raising dragons to pull chariots in his parades. If you go to Ica, Peru, they've got the driest desert in the world down there. It's only rained once or twice in 400 years. Not a good place for a garden. When the Spanish came across that area in 1570s, they, saw, they found white lines going across this desert. They said, obviously man-made lines. Why would somebody make this white line? It goes for miles across the desert. Nobody knew what these white lines were until they got airplanes. And they realized these are actually giant pictures. How many have ever heard of those before? They're called the Nazca Lines down in Peru. Amazing. When they came across there in 1571, the Spanish found stones with strange animals carved on them. They'd never seen an animal like that, so they brought the stones back to the king of Spain and said, what are these? He said, I don't know. They're called the Nazca Burial Stones. I have three of them in my museum in, here in Pensacola. I have two of them on the table with me tonight. One is a replica. I have three originals, though. These Nazca burial stones that are found down there have dinosaurs and humans together. Of the thousands of stones that were found, about 500 contain dinosaurs and humans together. They show all sorts of things like heart surgery, brain surgery, strange things on these stones. Dr. Baugh has two in, in Texas. Uh, Don Patton has one. Dennis Swift has two, I think, and we have three. There's only 15 in the whole United States. Three of them right here in Pensacola. Come on down to see our world famous, small right now, but we're getting there, uh, museum. We'll take over to Smithsonian here one day. Anton, well, that's a friend of mine. He went down there and spent eight months studying the Ica stones. Dennis Swift is a pastor in Oregon. He goes down there every year, talks to Dr. Dakara. Down in Ac Acamburo, Mexico. You're from Mexico, right, brother, missionary? You ever been to Acamburo? You know where that's at? Go to Mexico City, turn right, go about an hour and a half, middle of nowhere. You've been to Mexico City? Okay, thank you, sir. That's good. And you're his son. Okay. Amen. In Acamburo, Mexico, they found 56,000 ceramic figurines of dinosaurs and people together. The people in the town are real quiet about it because it just really upsets all the theories about evolution. There are stories of octopus actually pulling ships underwater. You say, come on, octopus never get that big. Oh, they get pretty big. This one washed up on the beach in St. Augustine, Florida, 100 years ago. The octopus was 200 feet across and weighed five tons. That's a big octopus. A whale was killed near Seattle, Washington. Inside the whale's stomach was one arm to an octopus. It was 150 feet long. See, whales love to eat octopus. And if a whale eats too much octopus, he'll get sick and puke it back up. And if you ever see a piece of puked up octopus floating around in the ocean, be sure to grab it. It's worth a lot of money. Does anybody know what they make out of puked up octopus? Yes? Oil? Perfume. That explains a few things, doesn't it, fellas? <laughs> hey, dear. You smell like a puked up octopus. <laughs> you know, whales love to eat octopus and squid, but octopus and squid never stop growing. There have been some awfully big squid seen out there in the ocean. Navy research vessel saw a giant squid attacking a giant whale in 1966 off the coast of Newfoundland. At Yale University, they've got the model of a giant squid hanging over my head there, Peabody Museum. This baby giant squid washed up on the beach in New Zealand. They said full grown, it would have been 150 feet long. That's a big squid. People say, now wait a minute, if dinosaurs always lived with man, like you're saying, why aren't they mentioned in the Bible?
Oh, well, they are. Dinosaurs are in the Bible. Now, the word, the word dinosaur isn't used. That word wasn't made up till later, you know. But they're called other names, which I'll show you. If you get the book of Job, the book of Job has 42 chapters. In the first two chapters, it says, Job was a perfect man. He feared God and hated evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And he had thousands of sheep and camels and oxen and asses. The guy had lots of money, okay? He was extremely wealthy. And one day the messenger came and said, Job, I have some bad news. All of the oxen uh, and asses were stolen, and your servants all got killed. And by the way, your sheep all got burned up, and the camels got stolen too. And Job was having a bad day, called the Hebrew stock market crash. That's where the word stock market comes from, I think. Stock, you know, animals, never mind. Uh, Another messenger came and said, Job, guess what? All ten of your kids just died. Hmm. Then Satan gave Job boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And to top it off, his wife turned against him. Job's really having a bad day. God never did tell Job why his kids died. He never did tell him why his livestock was stolen. He never did tell him any of that. All he did was ask him question after question after question. Hey, would you keep serving God if everything went wrong and you never found out why? Job did. We come to chapter 40. And God said, Behold now, behemoth. Now what on earth is a behemoth? Some reference Bibles say it must be the elephant or hippopotamus. No, it cannot be either of those, okay? I believe behemoth is the long-necked dinosaur, probably the brachiosaurus. There are actually 13 different long-necked dinosaurs, the brachiosaur, the cetosaur, the momentosaur, the seismosaur, the blondosaurus. He does have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? But God said, Behold now, behemoth eats grass as an ox. You say, Now, Brother Hovind, elephants eat grass, and my Bible says elephant. Well, a lot of animals eat grass, okay? Look at the next verse. His strength is in his loins, his force is in the navel of his belly. The biggest part on him is his belly. You say, Well, elephants have a big belly. Yep, I've seen them. Hippopotamus have a big belly. Mm -hmm. I've seen them too. Brachiosaurus has a big belly. Mm -hmm. He has a big belly. <laughs> Next verse says, He moveth his tail like a cedar. His tail is like a cedar tree. Hmm. Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? Not like a cedar tree, is it? How about hippo tail? Not like a cedar tree. You know, before they put those comments about the Bible in the Bible, they ought to at least read it. Don't you think, brother, before they put a comment about it, they at least, at least read it once. You know? <laughs> it can't be an elephant hippopotamus. They don't have a tail like a cedar tree. I mean, come on. See, the translators in the King James translation did not know a lot about dinosaurs. But this swamp in Africa is 80% unexplored today. Did you know there have been about 30 expeditions into that swamp in the last 20 years? They all come back saying there are dinosaurs still alive. Small ones, probably the apatosaurus or cetosaurus, uh, like this one. If you show this to the natives that live in the swamp, they'll say, yep, that's uh, Mokele Mbembe. Hmm? He still lives in the swamp. When Dr. Mackle showed them a picture of an Apatosaurus, they said, oh, that's uh, Mokele Mbembe. Dr. Mackle said, fellas, that's a dinosaur. They've been dead for 70 million years. And the natives said, we're sorry. We didn't know about that. <laughs> see, we've never been to America to learn about evolution. All we know is we see them out there in the swamp once in a while.